There's going to be two, three, four, maximum five main objections why people don't want to buy from you, why they're not going to buy from you. The mistake that beginners make is they pretend those objections either don't exist or aren't rational um, or you know they should just ignore them. And what this whole process is built on is identifying those objections and then answering them before you get to the sale. Like throughout your pre-launch, you are answering all the objections. So let's talk about lifestyle. You know, a lot of people talk about it, you live it. And uh, I think a lot of people, they're attracted to an online business because there's a certain lifestyle it can provide. But in a lot of cases, people, they're still a slave to their business, they have no freedom. I'd love to hear just your perspective on, on lifestyle, why that's so important for you. You need to figure out what you want your life to look like. And then you work backwards from there. And you program stuff in and you go and you get yourself the skills. So like for me, a huge part of my life is meditation. Um, I've been meditating on and off for nearly 20 years. The last, uh, we're about 14 months in where I just said, I'm not going to miss a day. Hey everyone, this is Stefan James from Project Life Mastery, and I'm here right now with Jeff Walker, who is the author of the New York Times best-selling book called Launch. He is the creator of the product launch formula, which teaches people how to launch any product they want online. So if you have a book, if you have a training program, a course, a message, if you have a physical product, an information product, this is the man to go to learn how to do that. He, his work has really revolutionized the internet since 2005 when you first introduced the product launch formula and really influenced my work as well. So it's a pleasure, Jeff, to have you. It's Thank you for taking time. You. Thanks for having me. Do you mind sharing with people your story, your background? I mean, you started back in 1996, <laughs> which is like a, way back in the day of the internet. Yeah, back in 96, it was crazy. So I was a stay-at-home dad. Uh, and that, it wasn't because I'd sold my dot-com for 30 million and I, it was desperate times. I'd failed in the corporate I had a corporate career, brief one, I was a failure there. My wife was supporting the family, we had two little kids, and I was desperate to make some extra money to try to support the family. And uh, I came up with this idea to start publishing online. At that point, I had an email address. I, we didn't have, I didn't have a website, but I had some knowledge about the stock market. And so I started publishing a newsletter about the stock market, and gradually, through word of mouth, built up a following, a few years or a few months later, I thought I had this thought, well, wow, maybe I can try to sell them something. And so I did what is now I didn't call it a launch then, but it was it was the first launch. And the money's a funny thing. Everyone's got a different frame of reference for money. And that launch brought in one thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. And for me at that now for some people are listening it's like why bother some people are like well they'd be amazing for me i was like i didn't literally do backflips but if i could have done a back right. backflip i would have it was yeah. it was life changing yeah. um because we had very little money at the time yeah. and and that was the start of everything because i did at that point and i know you you teach so much on personal development and some, some amazing stuff and i've gone deep on personal development and uh and and it's a huge part of my life. But back then, I, I was at the very beginning of my journey. And, but I did have a thought then that was probably one of the most important thoughts I ever had. And that was, if I just did this launch for $1,650, which is amazing to me, I'm gonna be able to do that again. Right, the possibilities. And again, yeah. and I might even get better at yeah. some point. And that's what happened. You know, the next launch was three or four months, five months later. It's been a long time, so I don't have yeah. the time. But that one did $6,000. So yeah. 1650 to 6000 is a massive leap. Yeah. Qu quadrupled. And then the next one did 8000 And then they gradually got better. And then a few years later, I did one that in a week's time, I made $106,000. Wow. And that actually helped me buy a home. Wow. And, and it kept on going and getting better and better and better and building and focusing on, you know, on building better products, building better marketing, building my list, my following. And eventually, you know, it's gotten absurd. I, I've yeah. actually, 
Um, I had a launch a few years ago that it, we hit a million dollars in, in the first 53 minutes. Wow. And, and I've had many days, not many, probably a, a dozen days where we've done a million dollars in sales in a single day. And, um, and it's just, it, it's just, this ride has been insane. It's yeah. been absolutely incredible. Yeah. It, it's, I couldn't even imagine it. Yeah. It's, and, and I mean, it's long ago. We, one of the things that I think I nailed, and I think I've seen you talk about this, is um, I didn't, we didn't grow our lifestyle. I have, I have this amazing right. lifestyle, but we, I don't have a Ferrari or two Ferraris right. or a Bentley. I, you know, I, I live out in the mountains of Colorado. I've got an amazing lifestyle, but I don't need universe you're not listening but it's like I don't need more money at this point yeah. so at this point I'm in the game to make an impact and help people that. that's great now product launch formula has really revolutionized the internet a lot of the top marketers in the world have studied and learned this model from you do you mind sharing a little bit uh, the different types of people this has worked for the different industries it's worked for the different types of products and some of the results of others yeah okay so I mean it's uh, this this body of work, the, the product launch formula, is this process yeah. that I teach, and I have a program to teach, and I have a live event that teaches it, and and all kinds of that. But the actual, let's just call it product launch formula, is the is the process, mm -hmm. and you can you can they can go you can go get the book, yeah. and it's ten dollars, and it's in the we'll, book. We'll link it to so, you. Yeah. You so there's all kinds. But when I say product launch formula, I'm just talking about the process, yes. not a not a product or a book or anything of mine. And so the process is you just you're delivering a lot of value. I know you know this, yeah. but you you deliver a lot of value in a structured way so that it, we have a pre-launch phase. And in the pre-launch phase, we typically deliver three pieces of content, mm -hmm. and in and in that time, it it delivers a lot of value for the for the person consuming your pre-launch, and they haven't paid anything, but then over the course of five, seven, 10 days of delivering this value, it naturally leads to the sale. So you've built up amazing value for people and they love you, and some of them are going to want to give you money without doing some big hard pitch. I mean, it's a very effective sale. And I mean, if you're putting something good out into the world, I think you, your highest obligation is to make an effective sale, to make an effective argument for the sale. And, and get people to, to step into your greater work. But I also like to deliver value along the way. Yes, yeah. And I don't want to coerce people. I don't, I, this isn't about browbeating people into buying. It's about leading them to taking the leap into whatever your paid product is. So pretty much every thought leader in the industry has either directly learned from me or learned from someone who yeah. learned from me. And if I started naming names, it would be liter yeah, every literally every <laughs> single person, every single thought leader. And it, it's just been ridiculous. And I've gotten to work with amazing people at the very highest level of the industry, um, you know, from Tony Robbins to Brennan Bouchard to Dean Graziosi to Ryan Dice to on and on and on are, well, I'm privileged to call most of them good friends of mine. And they, even though a lot of them are actually, I think probably better markers, they're still calling me up every time they want to do a campaign and we'll, we'll talk it through. And I've also, and it, you know, there's all the fancy names and these folks, you know, I say that with, with a jest when yeah. I say fancy names, because they're really, they're all, they've become great friends, but we all grew up in this industry together. I mean, we were just nerds at the back of the room, you know, drinking beers yeah. and, and um, but the, I've also had in every industry you could imagine, in every niche, in every market, people, you know, normal civilians that no one's heard of but are still incredible heroes in the work they're doing out there. So, you know, I think of like Susan Garrett teaches dog agility and she does these incredible launches and helps people train their dogs. Um, you know, Will Hamilton teaches tennis um, Michael Maidens teaches health and uh, Marie Forleo and Chris Carr and it just goes on and on and just markets I never even heard of yeah. when I started teaching. Everything. Like you know there's um, are you like a horse person at all? Uh, it's okay to say no, really no because I'm not. <laughs> so, so there's this um, someone wrote in and said Jeff I just did a $160,000 launch and I teach and the word is it's a type of horse riding, right. and there's going to be some people really laughing right now. <laughs> but it's spelled D R E 
S S A G E. Okay. So that's a. How would you pronounce that word? D R E S S A G E. Dress dressag dressag. Well, I I I thought it was so cool when she wrote in this testimony. So I'm on stage in front of 300 people, saying, hey, "Look at this testimony," and it, it's. A, she did 160 thousand dollars in the dressage market, right. which is not right. it's dressage, okay. and like people were openly laughing at yeah. me in the audience because it's like this. It's, it's a, a big thing. Niche thing yeah. it, it's actually not that niche. It's an Olympic sport. Okay, it's, they also call it horse ballet. Right. Um, so, anyways, I'm getting a little yeah, sidebar, yeah. but this just shows some of the crazy. Not, they're not crazy. Mar they're just markets I never heard of. Yeah. You know, calligraphy. I, 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 yeah. A hand hypnosis or whatever yeah. this uh, it, every market because at the end of the day this is a process that through delivering value and through using what we call these mental triggers that engage people with your marketing it just leads them to the sale. Got it. So I know a lot of people can relate. They have a product out there. I think one of the big mistakes people make is they create a product. They put a lot of time, energy. It's their passion. And they think if I just put it out there, people are going to find it and buy it. If they build it, they will come. And then oftentimes, I know I've been through this experience of putting something out there. I wrote a, right. a book. It took me a year to write it, and nobody bought it. And so I think this is such a powerful metho me methodology that you've created um, that can really serve people. Do you mind sharing a little bit about the process in terms of, you know, um, the, the I guess the the pre-launch? And I know you break it down to the pre-pre-launch. We right. kind of plant the seed, build the anticipation. Um, and, and, and just kind of how someone can deliver that value to lead up to the actual launch and then what they do after that. Yeah, well, so there's a few different styles of launch. There's, there, there's a bunch of them. There's three main ones that we teach, um, but all of them rely on this sequence. So, so the product launch formula comes down to three things. It's stories, sequences, and triggers. So stories because we communicate as humans. That's how we communicate. Even right now, I, we've each told a couple stories already in these few minutes, and that's that's what engages. That's how humans communicate. So we build stories into our pre-launch, and then the idea of a sequence, because the opposite of a sequence is like a Super Bowl ad. You know, for for you know for a big company, for a beer company, for Coca-Cola or whatever, they can go and spend millions to create the ad and millions to air the ad and hope it works. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. Right. So. Um, we don't want to put out a one-shot deal and just hope it works. Right. I talk a lot about hope marketing. Right. We don't want to ever mm -hmm. depend on hope marketing. Yeah. You want to engineer your marketing. So that sequence is the idea of you're, you're using this pre-launch sequence and this open cart sequence because you don't ever want to depend on one ad, one email, one right. anything. And the triggers are these mental triggers that we all are influenced by. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them, like one would be social proof. When we see right. other people doing something, we want to do it as well. We're influenced to do it. Scarcity, when there's less of something, we want more of it. Community, when we're it, within a community, we act in accordance to how we think the people in that mm -hmm. community should act. And it goes on and on. There's more and more. But we build those into the sequence. So the first piece of the sequence there's a, let's call it the pre-launch sequence mm -hmm. and then the open cart sequence. And there is the pre-pre, but I don't think we have time for the okay. pre-pre. Nice. So the, um, in the pre-launch, there's typically three pieces of content. And the first piece is what we call the opportunity or the journey. And this is where you're, you're, you're basically teaching people that there's an opportunity that they can change their lives. Because unless you're doing pure e-com, and this does work for e-com, but I'm mostly going to focus on information-based products yeah. because it's a... It's the easiest setup in our limited yep. time. And so whatever you're selling as an information product, there is, there's this opportunity for someone to change their lives. They, they, they have an opportunity to, to learn how to play guitar. They have the opportunity to, to, to learn how to meditate. They have the opportunity to, to find the love of their life. They have the opportunity to quit smoking and on and on and on. So that first, it could be a video, it could be a PDF, it could be uh, a blog post, it could be a podcast, but typically we do video. Video is generally the easiest way to, for most of us to communicate our ideas because not all of us are great writers, but most of us can speak. Yeah. And so the first one, the first piece of pre-launch content is about that opportunity that you can, you know what, I know you, you bought that guitar and it's sitting in the corner gathering dust, but really you can play. I, I could teach you how to play five songs in the next 14 days. And then you're going to be able to sit 
around when people see the guitar in the corner they're like oh you got a guitar you can play instead of saying well not really i just you know it's out of tune i don't have a tuner or whatever you can actually pick it up and play a simple song and you can entertain people and you can play with other people and there is that opportunity to be instead of a guitar owner a guitar player a musician so that first piece whatever your opportunity is that first piece is about the opportunity and then the second piece is what we call that's the transformation so that if the first one piece is about conceptually that you can become one the second one is about you let's talk right. about your transformation how your life is going to change and often in that second one we'll have case studies so we'll make it very real for the person who the viewer it goes it just becomes more personal it goes from that that yeah you can you the the royal you or yeah. the we the royal we can someone can play music to you're going to be playing music yeah. and and in here maybe you give an actual lesson so they actually have this feeling when they pick up their guitar so then the third piece is what we call the ownership experience or or ownership and this is when we start to make it very real what's going what will be their transformation when they have the product that you're going to offer to them got it and so typically the way this is structured and put together is you'd send, you'd send traffic to a landing page where you're offering these three valuable videos of content that can help them. They opt in, so they're putting their name and email, they get on your email list, and then you deliver, do you deliver these videos over a week or yeah, what's usually, the typical sequence? Yeah, usually it's, it's like between five and 10 days. Okay. And, and that range is because two, the, like two of the main launches one is what we call the internal launch and this is if you have a list if you have an email list if you have a social following you're primarily marketing to just them now there's also a joint venture launch and that's where you have uh, it we call a jv launch it's an affiliate launch that's where you have affiliates send traffic into yours and viewers might be saying oh i don't have a list so i want to do that jv launch and that's fantastic but it is it is more work i got to tell you Here's a disclaimer that's going to blow this whole thing. They, 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 we're about to lose all your viewers. <laughs> there is work involved. The, this isn't, you know, you're going to make a million dollars in 53 minutes. Some, you, at some point, someone's got to do some work. So, um, no, this, no, there are no income claims yeah. here at all. I'm just joking. You're not, you're not going to make a, 50, a million dollars in 53 minutes. I, I, yeah, they're yeah. not. They're yeah. not. No. Maybe your 20th launch, your 30th launch. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it is a process. Life's a process. Yeah. It's a practice. Um, but, so if you're going to do a joint venture launch and have other people be mailing into your thing, then it's a, typically it's a longer process because you got to give them time to get on board. But if, it, if it's just you doing it to, if you have an email list or a social following, that, you know, usually five, six days. So it'd be the first piece of pre-launch content, you let that gestate for maybe three days, and then the second piece, and then a couple days later, the third piece. And then a few days after that is when you open cart and then you go into the open cart sequence. So what's happening for the prospect as they're going through the sequence? And I know from my experience, they're getting so much value. They're, you know, right. they, they love it. It doesn't feel like you're selling anything, right? right. And, and you're building a relationship. And regardless of whether or not they buy, you know, the, the launch is educating them and providing so much value regardless. Right. Um, but what is typically happening by the time it gets to the open cart? Do you have people kind of knocking on your door yeah. waiting for the product? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, the, ideally people around, like when that third piece drops, um, depending on the, sophist so the sophistication of your market, frankly, because it, it's different now than it was right. 20 years ago. If you're like me and you're selling an online entrepreneurship training program, everyone is following my process so people have seen it right. right but if you were doing like how to do handwriting analysis and those folks haven't seen it then usually that when that third one drops they're starting to email you and say when are you going to take my money yeah you know how much is it that's the first question is how much is it and when can i just give you sometimes it's like can i just give me, give you my credit card now and you'll just charge it whenever <laughs> So that, that stuff does happen, it, it's, it's pretty crazy. And also, like one thing I wanted to mention is that when you, you will release these videos, and typically we're not just gonna drop them on YouTube, you're gonna put them on your web page, right. And then there's gonna be comments, you allow comments down below. And in those comments, it, this is a critical piece is to have those comments. Mm -hmm. Because one, it starts to build social proof when you have people leaving comments and other people can see those comments. Two, it actually starts to build community if you're doing this right. 
and because people will start to be answering each other and talking about how excited they are and you build up this community and, and the expectation of this community is we end up buying the more advanced program and but also a really critical piece is that you can start to identify the objections Wh whatever you're selling there the, there's going to be two three four maximum five main objections why people don't want to buy from you why they're not going to buy from you and the mistake that beginners make is they pretend those objections either don't exist or aren't rational um, or you know they should just ignore them and what this whole process is built on is identifying those objections and then answering them before you get to the sale like throughout your pre-launch you are answering all the objections Right. So like if it's you're trying to learn to play a few songs, well, it hurts my fingers when, I, when I'm first starting. Well, you're going to answer that objection leading up so that you've already hit it before you get to the sales process. So absolutely critical. Got it. And so in terms of the open card, that's when you make it available. Yeah. And, and can you just describe that process? Is there a certain limited time offer, scarcity, for sure, for sure. and something that's so irresistible that they've got to buy now? Yeah. So what you have to do so you get to do what we call the open cart so you have the pre-launch now we have open cart so now you're in a new sequence so it's you will have either a sales letter or a sales video you mail people send them to that you'll get some sales at the beginning but that here's the key thing is there has to be a defined period the, your open cart period has to end your launch has to end yeah i mean if you look out into the real world <laughs> the real world yeah. um at any any event has has a beginning and an end. And so you have to have a beginning and an end. And so typically it's five days, maybe seven days, never longer than seven days. Because what you're going to be, you'll be sending an email each day. And we can talk about that in a minute. Um, but at the end, this is where we get really super, super technical, super technical. At the end of your launch, something bad has to happen if they don't buy. Right. That's the technical piece. Yeah. So what I mean by that is there has to be a line in the sand where there's, here's a special offer and this offer is only good until the end of the launch. So you've seen this in, you know, I'm a skier, right? So when before the season begins, you can buy a season pass and then, you know, once the season starts, you can still buy a season pass, but it costs more money. Mm -hmm. And I always buy it at the cheapest price yeah. because that's the way we are, right? And so you, at the end of the launch, something significant has to happen and so that they can no longer get that deal. So this is what we call scarcity. And when something scares people want it more. And yeah. It's a deadline. Deadlines create action. So either the bonuses go away or the price goes up or the product goes off the market and you can't get it anymore. Those are the three main types of scarcity. I name them in order of power. Mm -hmm. The least powerful is some bonuses go away. The second, uh, more, more powerful is price goes up. Third is the product completely goes off the market. You can't get it anymore. Um, and so, you know, like Bruce Springsteen had a show on Broadway last year. And like at the, the last month when it, it was going to be his last show, you couldn't get a ticket for anything, right? It didn't matter what you were willing to spend. And, and you can stack those. You can have multiple, you, can, you could have the bonuses go away and the price right, goes up. Right. But that has to happen, and yet I think you have to be pretty hardcore on that. Yeah. And then what you'll see, again, it depends on the sophistication of the market. It used to be that 50% of your sales came in the first hour, yeah. or 25% in the first hour, 50% in the first 24 hours, and then the other 50% the other, um, for the rest of the week. Now it's often 50% of your sales come on the last day. Right. So as a race of, or as a species, we've become better procrastinators than we used to be. Yeah. But yeah, those are yeah, just so you're giving them a reason to buy, getting yeah. them off the fence yeah. as well. Um, and so what else, I think it's great, you go more in depth into this process in your book, Launch. Yeah. I'll link it for you guys below, but if you go to www.projectlifemaster.com slash launch, highly recommend your book. And then if you wanna actually see it in, that go through the sequence and actually check out his incredible training program where he walks you through step by step all of this. It's called Product Launch Formula. And if you go to www.projectlifemaster.com slash PLF, head on over there, check it out. Now you work with so many incredible entrepreneurs, uh, people just getting started, people achieving massive success. 
I'd love to know from you, what's the difference that you've observed from those that go on to become huge successes and those that struggle and fail? And I know there's a mental mindset component, which I'd love just kind of dive into. You know, what have, what have you noticed that prevents people from really making it? You know, that's a great question. And I spent a lot of time thinking about that. And I think there's characteristics. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, this is something I learned. So Tony Robbins, I stumbled on right, right when I was getting my, starting my journey. And, and he's become a friend. And we, I've, got, I've been to his house and we uh, hang out, and, and, um, which is ridiculous. And, and what I, but what I noticed about him when I first bought Personal Power 2, on the CDs, and you're probably too young to remember this, but there was a time where you had to choose, you got to, you could get the cassettes right. or spend an extra 20 bucks and get the CD. The breaking, the new technology, yeah. like, was, was CDs. And, um, but as I was going through it, the, the thing that I realized is that, you know, Tony, he, most of the work he presents is he's curated other people's work yeah. and he's learned it. And what I realized is that no matter what, you want to learn in the world there is someone who has dedicated their life they've put in the 10,000 hours mm -hmm. they have dedicated their lives and they teach it mm -hmm. and it might be in a book it might be in a seminar it might be on a YouTube video but that there anything you want to learn in the world someone else has figured it out and you just tap into it the masters. You tap into the people who have put in those 10,000 hours mm -hmm. and who are teaching from experience. Mm -hmm. And so the people that I know that have the most success are the folks that consistently seek out the masters and then they actually follow their work and they do the work. Okay. They don't try to reinvent it. Mm -hmm. There's time for reinvention and that's like after you do the exact right. strategy. Right. The exact, like I have students that are running 10 and 20 million dollar businesses that literally had nothing going on before they came into my world and got product launch formula and those are the people that went through the process mm -hmm. and they didn't start innovating until they actually went through the entire process mm -hmm. so this works in every area of life so i'm a, i'm i'm i love to do a lot of outdoor sports i'm a skier I have whitewater kayaker, I um, just all kinds. I live out in the mountains of Colorado. I love to have adventures. So I've been a skier for 40 years. Never took any lessons in my life until like three years ago. I started taking lessons. And the craziest thing happened is like I now take like weekly lessons with the same instructor. Um, through, we're almost in our third year. And so I learned from an expert. And guess what happened? I got better. Right. I did like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, I'm like such an idiot. I'm like, I, this is what I do for a living is I'm a thought yeah. leader. I'm a teacher. I'm a trainer. I help people get excellence. And yet here's an area where like, I just, why didn't I do that? Because I'm an idiot. Yeah. And so I started taking these lessons. I got so much better. So just a, last Wednesday, when I had my lesson, one of my problems in skiing, I got plenty of them, but one of them is, are you a skier or snowboarder? Snowboarder a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So. You know, you're supposed to keep your upper body pretty still and your, your lower body's doing all the turning. And so like if that's, let's say this is down the mountain, is, yeah. that's the fall line. Yeah. And so I keep my upper body facing you, the camera, and my legs are pivoting back and forth, but my upper body is staying still. Mm -hmm. So they gave me a less, the, the, but that's not what I do. Yeah. That's not what I do. It's my, my upper body's like all over, going like this. And so my instructor finally said, take your poles, and I want you, he's like, hold your poles like this and f have the poles be facing down the fall line right at the camera. And then your, your, like, then your body, your, your, your legs are turning back and forth, but your poles should always be facing down. And he gave me this drill. I'm like, okay, well, that's pretty easy. Yeah. So like I start off like this and I do a couple of turns and all of a sudden my poles are over here and I'm like, right. I'm like, whoa, wait, wait, what? I bring him back there, do two more turns, my poles are over. I mean, I totally thought I was doing it right. I had no freaking clue. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm an idiot. So long story short, tap into the wisdom that's out there. And that's the people that I see that are succeeding at the highest level. They're just leveraging other people's wisdom. And then, they, you know, then there's, the, there's habit, there's mastery, there's, mm -hmm. there's incremental gains. 
there, there, there's so much which you've taught through all your videos. Yeah. There's so much there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, especially when you're starting out. When you're starting out, the great thing is when you're starting out. Like when you go to play that first song on your guitar, it's really actually pretty, right. pretty easy to get that first song. Yeah. You can make quantum leaps in the beginning. Yeah. You know, once you achieve a certain level then you know you're looking for those one percent gains and you're working really hard to get those one percent right. gains right. but at the beginning it's just like that i i love being a beginner i love yeah i love being a beginner at you know yeah uh, like whatever watercolor painting you name it because it, you get so much satisfaction there's so much growth at the beginning yeah. of any yeah. journey yeah so it's it's going through that learning curve because they're not going to make millions overnight, right? It starts off with small launches and just getting better and better. Is that the process typically? You might have launches that yeah. don't go the way you expect or you put a lot of time, effort, but you learn from it, right? And that learning mentality and that growth, eventually you get to that point where they're doing a seven-figure launch. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we have had people go through that, you know, process, get to a seven-figure within probably like, oh, I'm going to say 18 months or so. Right. But there, you know, there's always exceptions. I mean... Yeah. It's progress, not perfection. And I know, like, if I was out there telling people they could make a million dollars overnight, I'd, I'd sell a lot more right. of their product. Right. But I've been doing this for a long time. I have literally, I have people in my program that are like in the ninth and tenth and twelfth and thirteenth year with me. Yeah. And you don't get that by telling people they're going to make a million bucks no. overnight. Got it. So let's talk about lifestyle. You know, a lot of people talk about it. You live it. And uh, I think a lot of people, they're attracted to an online business because there's a certain lifestyle it can provide. But in a lot of cases, people, they're still a slave to their business. They have no freedom. I'd love to hear just your perspective on, on lifestyle, why that's so important for you and how someone can leverage an online business to actually create a certain lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, I am about the lifestyle. I, I, I live out, you know, I don't, I don't live in one of the hotbeds of marketing. I live out in the mountains. I'm 300 miles from Denver, yeah. uh, because it's it's important to me to be out to Your be values. out yeah to be out in the woods to have, be a place where I want my kids to grow up out out outdoors and and so it's it's all about being intentional and figuring out what you want. So I'm not saying you should move out to the mountains because there's 99% of people you know you want to live in the city or whatever, but just figure out what get a vision for your life and there's many different ways to do this in many ways i've gone through it and i'm periodically reinventing what i want my life to look like but you need to figure out what you want your life to look like and then you work backwards from there mm -hmm. and you program stuff in and you go and you get yourself the skills so like for me a huge part of my life is meditation yeah. um, i've been meditating on and off for nearly 20 years for the last, uh, we're about 14 months in where I just said, I'm not going to miss a day. Mm -hmm. And that quiets my mind. And that allows, it's those moments of quiet where I get my, my clarity on where my life's going to go, where my, what, what my intention is for my life. And then I program it in. Like one of the things I've talked about, like in my videos, is I do, again, we're talking about skiing a lot. I guess it's the winter right now. <laughs> um, I, I ski Friday. Like it goes in my calendar. Every Friday is ski Friday. Doesn't mean I can't ski other days, but if you don't schedule in your lifestyle, yeah. then just be consumed by your business. The the you know, we're all you know, here's here's like the perfect distraction yeah. mechanism yeah. in the freaking war. No one could design a better distraction mechanism than that one, right? And so if you wake up and the first thing you're doing is you're picking up your phone you've just outsourced your time to someone else's priorities. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I, I, my phone doesn't ever come upstairs to my bedroom. It mm -hmm. lives on the first floor. I don't look at it until after I'm through my meditation and my, my first workout of the day. Yeah. And I schedule stuff in. I schedule my distractions. So my distractions are, they're like everyone else. You know, it's, it's either email or social or meetings or messages from my team so there is a time in my day and it's not in the morning because the morning is when i'm creative mm -hmm. so everyone's got their own you know biorhythms and the way their day works but i think you should the first thing you gotta do is get control of your morning yeah morning ritual absolutely yeah. so i've been i've been t hardcore in a morning ritual since 2009 yeah. and tweak it and tweak it and tweak it but you you have to take care take control of that and you have to set yourself up for the good day so, so what typically do you mind sharing what 
typical ritual you'll do? You mentioned meditation, working out, anything else you do to help, or any rituals or habits throughout the day? Yeah, so one of the, I've been playing about two years into playing with intermittent fasting, yeah. so I don't typically, uh, you know, I'll finish. I'm not crazy about it, but it's pretty much every day, so I'm, you know, from when I finish my dinner, I will not have any calories until usually it's around 11 or 12, right. 11 a.m. to 12. Um, if it sometimes, like on my ski lesson days, I'll go do my lesson and then, so then it'll end up being 2 p.m. by the time I eat anything. Um, so that one, I just feels good to me. I just, it, it well, what more it is, energy. more energy, but also I'm, intention is one of my big words. And, and I think that when you get, whenever you get more intentional in an area of your life, it makes all areas of all other areas more intentional, and so fasting is like super intentional. It's like instead of like I'm walking through the kitchen and there's some nuts out in the counter, I'm going right. to pop some nuts in. Some I'll reach for them. I'll be like, oh yeah, no, I'm going to have to wait another two hours tomorrow now, and it just makes you aware of what you're putting in your mouth, yeah. which is a, a big thing that we do as humans is put stuff in our mouths, and so um, yeah, so that's one of them. It is it's hydration. Um, I'm often doing like lemon water in the morning, which you can do it. That's yeah. not a breaking of the fast. Yeah. Um, I'll usually, uh, I, I'll do a number of different workouts, but generally it's around structure and alignment and, and getting, I, I naturally have like posture that's like right. this. Yeah. So I've been intentionally working on my posture for probably five or six years. Yeah. And so usually that's one of the first things I do. So I, I do this uh, stuff, it's called Egoscue. Yep. It's Egoscue this, idea. yep. And um, so I do some egoscue, I do some breathing, I do some meditation. There's often some journaling in there, but it's not dialed in the way, like meditation is the cornerstone. Yeah. That's the yeah. cornerstone. And it's usually um, 10 to 20 minutes. I got, I've gone through many different things. Currently, last three or four months, I'm using the Waking Up app by Sam Harris. Right. Um, but I've gone through many different ones. I, I'm digging Waking Up, it's pretty, Pretty darn cool. Yeah. Um, and then, um, the and then it's like get to my desk. I try to do what a lot of people call the Pomodoro yeah. thing, like that, with some create creative stuff. I'll do 50 minutes on, 10 minutes off, and um, and then like sort of that takes me through usually noon, one o'clock. I'm lazy. Yeah. I just don't get much yeah. done. But yeah. really, the reality is, this, this I think as creatives. If I can do, so this, I'm gonna out myself just how little I work. Um, I think like 50 minutes on, like with a timer where I got headphones on, I got binaural beats going, yeah. and I'm like creating 10 minutes off, um, that is a solid day. If I do two of those, it, you put that day in the wind column. Mm -hmm. It's that day, you know, I think in my life I've probably, maybe a couple of days I've done four of those sessions and those are like superhero days. But I think, I think most people in, a lot of people in this business, they, they, they go into the entrepreneurial OCD loop. Mm -hmm. That's like check email, boom, yeah. check social, boom, yeah. check stats. And you've killed just enough time to circle back to email. Yeah. I think it's really easy to fall into that. And they're very reactive throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and you know, all of a sudden it's like 6 p.m. and you haven't done anything but check stats and right. looked at email. And so I think that like a couple of those, two of those focused, 50 minutes, 100 minutes of focused creativity, more than almost anyone in the, of your peers or your competitors yeah. or whatever yeah. gets done, I, I think. Yeah. So the last question I have, just any general advice for people that are watching this that are starting their journey and they want to build their business, create this lifestyle, any last message that you want to offer people? Yeah, I think a lot of people, um, last message, it's a tough one. Mm -hmm. So, if there's one core message that you'd love to give people watching this, what would that be? Well, so first, of, I got a couple. First of all, we live in a world where everyone's on social all the time. And what you see on social from almost everyone, including the biggest names, yeah. biggest influencers, is a stage show. Right. It's not reality. Yeah. And so it's really easy to look around, your desk is a mess, and your opt-in page isn't working, and your last offer was like mediocre, mm -hmm. 
and you know your 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 kids are screaming or your dog needs to go out for a walk and you see someone getting in their Bentley or just you know and the on the Riviera with some you know beautiful person or the others that's a stage show so that that it's wrong it's just you know there's 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 a stage and then there's real life and don't compare your backstage to someone else's front stage. That's a saying I learned from Dan Sullivan. Don't compare what you got going, your real life, to someone else's stage show. And because you have to protect your mindset. You have to protect who you are. You, and you have to protect your confidence. And if you let yourself get dragged down by comparing yourself to the stage show, you're, you, you can't go anywhere. Yeah. And so that, that's one, and the other one is it's all incremental. Yeah. My, I have had launches that did, have done multi, I, I can't remember the last launch I did that wasn't a multi-million dollar launch. Mm -hmm. But none of those multi-million dollar launches were anywhere near as important as that first yeah. launch yeah. that did $1,650. Yeah. And that's why I remember that number and I talk about that number because that is what got me here. Yeah. And I didn't, the belief. yeah, the belief that someone would actually, Someone's gonna buy, pay me, yeah. pay me, just me. They're gonna pay me for something. Yeah. It's like, oh my god! Made it real. Yeah. And yeah, and so and that could be your first dollar or for sale. It doesn't have to whatever amount. Your first dollar is yeah. harder than your hundredth dollar, and your your thousandth dollar is harder than your hundredth dollar. And you know what? Your ten thousandth is a lot easier to get to ten thousand from one thousand. It's a lot easier to get to a million from a hundred thousand. But people see, like a lot of times you're out there and you're looking at other like thought leaders, they look at you. And it's like you're putting out stuff, you look great. I mean, you're, you're, you've got this amazing apartment with this incredible balcony, you're wearing a nice shirt, you got some guns here. It's like you look all fit, but you didn't start there. And none of us do. But we all started somewhere. We all got our first opt-in. We all got our first subscriber. We all made our first sale. My, I started selling, it was a newsletter about the stock market. I had no idea, no idea that 20 some years later, I'm gonna be sitting in a fancy suite, talking to fancy cameras with you about really, about business building and thought leadership. And I just take that, the, yeah. I talk about baby steps all the time. Take the baby step, move forward. Get your first offer up. Get your first opt-in up. Get your first post out there. Yeah, yeah. Find your voice. Find your followers. Yeah. Boom. It's such an important message. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. You're it's welcome. a pleasure. Guys, check out Jeff Walker's YouTube channel as well for more great content from him. We'll link to that below. And of course, check out his book, Launch. Again, the link is www.projectlifemastery.com slash launch and the product launch formula, www.projectlifemastery.com slash PLF. Thank you again so much, Jeff. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, hit thumbs up here on YouTube and leave a comment below. See you in the next video.